Greetings fellow members of the Esoteric Order of Gamers. Welcome to the second part of the Assassin's Creed Brotherhood of Venice painting tutorial series. Let's get into it. Right, let's get started with the fast travel stations. And I'm going to use a base of Wraithbone. Basically using the same technique I've used for the bases of the miniatures. So I'll paint the whole thing in Wraithbone. And I'm using a makeup brush here. I find this very easy to use for um, when you're putting large amounts of paint on like this. Also, they're very handy for dry brushing and they're cheap. So once that's fully painted, I make sure that's thoroughly dry before going on to the next step. Now I'm using Seraphim Sepia Shade to wash the entire figure. And you can be quite generous when you put this on. Just remember that wash, all washes, will pool a little bit in the recesses. And to get rid of that, you just want to wipe off your brush on a paper towel and then soak up the excess wash where you don't want it to be. For example, if it pulls on a flat surface, you don't want the wash sitting on a flat surface just in the recesses. So you can easily soak that up with a dry brush. But just cover the entire figure except for the roof. You can see here I'm just soaking up a little bit of the excess and making sure it's just going into the recesses where I want it. Next up a blue for the roof, Sotek Green and Macrag Blue. I mixed these two together because I wanted a slightly turquoise blue. Actually in the end I ended up adding a little bit more blue but you can just mix colours together until you get the right one you want. You don't have to go by straight citadel colors all the time. Remember you've got the power to mix them together and come up with exactly the color you want. Remember always to water down your paints a little bit with some water just so they flow on nicely. Carefully paint around the spire on the roof and then just paint around the edge just underneath the lip of the roof. I'll paint the spire with lead belcher. Just straight from the pot in this case because it's a metallic. Contrast Black Templar. This flows on really easily and I'll use this to paint the gate and the negative space behind it. And you can just dab that in. Just be careful you don't paint the stonework on either side of the gate. Next I'll use some Drakenhof Nightshade, watered down with a bit of Lamian Medium, just to shade the roof. Of course, making sure every step that it's thoroughly dry before moving on to the next. You don't want to wash anything that isn't thoroughly dry. And this just brings out the texture on the roof a little bit. Again, making sure it doesn't pool too much. Then using a mixture of Lead Belcher and Storm Host Silver, I'm going to carefully paint in the gate. Now again, of course, this is thoroughly dry before I do this. And I can just drag this over the raised areas of uh, the metal grate there. Just being careful not to paint any of the negative areas behind it. Now I'm going to give all the stone areas a bit of a dry brush with Wraithbone just to bring it back to that stone colour. Wipe off most of the excess on a paper towel and give it a very very light dry brush. You don't want uh, any brush strokes or streakiness from this. So you need hardly any paint on your brush when you do it. And just drag it over the very highest areas the highlighted areas, the edges, just to give that stone a bit of dimension. Remember when you're dry brushing, you're always dragging the brush against the angle of the surface that you're wanting to highlight. So if it's an edge, you want to drag it down across the edge instead of along it. Now I'm going to give the roof a bit of a dry brush too with rust grey. And I want to make this a very, very light dry brush and just carefully pick out that sort of ribbing on the roof to give it a bit of depth. 
trying not to get too much in the way of brush strokes or bristle texture in my dry brushing. You can use a little bit more paint as you go carefully just around the edge to make that a little bit lighter. Once that's done, Agrax Earthshade. I'll just use that to wash the spire. Makes it look a little bit dirty and oily because it's been out in all weathers. And wash the gate grill area as well. Finally, I manually paint in the negative areas between the columns. I'm either using Black Templar or actually probably just some watered down Abaddon Black for this. But be very careful and don't paint the columns themselves, just the negative area in between them. This gives a lot of nice depth to uh, that top area of the fast travel station. Now a final highlight, a little edge highlight with Wraithbone. And I'm just going along the very topmost raised edges, just manually with that, just giving them an extra little bit of highlight. A little bit on the tops of the columns as well. As a last touch, a little bit of silver on the top of the metal spire. Maybe a bit on the gate as well. And there it is, fast travel station done. Let's move on now to the hiding place. And the wood areas, I'm going to start with contrast wild wood, nice dark brown. And I'll paint all the wooden areas of this uh, pavilion. Carefully painting around the edge of the curtains. And there you go. Now scrag, scrag brown I'm going to use for the curtains themselves. You can use any colour you want for the curtains. I just thought I'd keep it relatively subdued. But you can make these blue or red or anything you want really. In which case, uh, just keep in mind for the subsequent steps, just to do a shadow and a highlight on them. You'll be using the appropriate colours depending on what base colour you pick. So carefully paint those in. Of course you want to keep moving the miniature around in your hand so it's very easy to access all the little nooks and crannies as you're painting. Castellan Green I'm using as a base coat for the vines and greenery that are creeping around the top and I'll just dab this in a little bit watered down. I'm not being too careful about picking out the exact detail here it doesn't really matter so I'm just dabbing it over the areas where there seems to be leaves and, and vines growing. You could spend forever picking out every exact leaf and getting it right but I don't think that's necessary really. Gawthor Brown and Rackarth Flesh I'm using to highlight the dark brown. Starting off with Gawthor Brown and then working up to Rackarth Flesh which is a lighter brown. And just a light, well actually not really, a, a kind of heavier dry brush here because I want a sort of um, weather worn dark wood effect here. Make sure you dry brush just the edges of the top as well just to give that a highlight on the edge. Mix in a bit of Rackarth Flesh, just work up to a lighter highlight. Remember keeping very little uh, paint on your brush, so you just have a light dry brush. And as the highlight gets lighter, you want to have uh, uh, even less paint on your brush, so you get a lighter and lighter dry brush. But just keep picking out the top of the edge. And all the detail in that, um, in that woodwork. Elysian Green I'm using to highlight the greenery and with this I'm just using a brush and kind of dabbing it over the raised areas of the greenery. Sort of semi dry brush but not very dry dry brush. <laughs> and this just brings out the detail of that greenery without going to too much uh, obsessive detail about it. Then I'm using Avalanche Sunset and this is just dabbing some very very small yellow highlights into that green to really make it pop. Just quickly. That just brings out some of those little leaf textures and gives it a bit of depth. 
And from a distance, this will look great. Deathclaw Brown is the colour I'm using to highlight the curtains. And I'm highlighting the pleats of the curtains here. And I'm not being obsessively neat about this, but pretty neat. Doesn't have to be absolutely exact, but you just want to highlight those raised pleats. Mixing a bit of Scrag Brown and Rhinox, Rhinox Hide gives me a dark brown colour to then paint in some of the recesses. Again, I don't have to do them all, just a little bit at the top and a bit at the bottom. If I mix some Wraith Bone with my Deathclaw Brown, I can get a nice bright highlight colour and use that on just the very, very uh, top highlights of the curtains. There you can see we've got quite a lot of depth in the curtains. And that's the finished hiding spot, looking pretty good. As a final touch, I'm just going to add a few little scratches to the top, just to give it a bit of definition, a bit of detail. Also painting in shadows as well to make them look as though they're actually cut into the wood. That gives a bit of interest to the top of the hiding place. And it's done. Now the chests. Starting off with corn red, that's going to be the base colour for the panels of the chest. And I'll paint in those panels. I don't have to be too careful here because the wooden slats are going to be painted black. So this doesn't have to be exact. You can paint in a little bit of red just in between that, the detail there of the edge metallic bits, the filigree or whatever you want to call it. Retributor Armour is the colour I'm using for all that metallic detail which is the lock, of course, and uh, the edges and corners of the chest. All that metal will be painted in this colour. And you can be neat with this, but you don't have to be too obsessively neat about it, because this will get a wash, which will uh, define it quite effectively. Now I'm going to paint in all the wooden slats of the chest with a batten black. Just mix a little bit of water with it so it flows nicely and paint in those slats a little bit more carefully this time. Using Seraphim Sepia, once that's all thoroughly dry, I'm going to wash the golden areas. This will define them nicely and bring out all the detail of that, that filigree and detail. Next up, Mechanicus Standard Grey. I'm using this as a highlight colour on the black slats. And just painting this directly across the middle. So the black that's left highlights those shapes really nicely, or defines those shapes, I should say. Carefully paint that over all the slats of the chest. Finally, a bit of Dawnstone. And I'll use this just on the top of the chest, just to give a little dab to highlight the edges of that top of the chest. You can also run a little bit along the edge of the top as well. Now I'm using Mephiston Red and I'm going to mix that with a bit of Corn Red just to give a bit of a lighter red and just paint in the central part of each panel just to add a little bit of depth to each panel. So I'm leaving the dark Corn Red in the uh, recesses or the edges of each panel and then brightening up the centre a bit with Mephiston Red. This just gives a little bit of depth to that red in each panel. Stormhost Silver. I use this to highlight the gold, especially on the top edge of the chest. Just a little bit of highlight on the corners, maybe a little bit on the lock as well. Just to give it a bit of sparkle. If you want to, you can pull that back a little bit by painting in a bit more Seraphim Sepia after it's dry. Next up, we're getting onto these guys, the Brutes. And these are quite easy because they're mostly armour. I'll start by doing the red areas with Blood Angel's red contrast paint. Just paint in this uh, piece of material underneath his armour. And there's a bit on the sleeve as well. Then using contrast Wildwood, I'm painting in the haft of his axe. And then his leggings. The great thing about using contrast paint for this kind of thing is that all the detail of those leggings comes out 
You don't really have to highlight it too much, um, but it isn't flat looking. Next up a mixture of, well, either Rune Fang Steel or Stormhose Silver. They're relatively similar colours. You can use either one. Or you could start with a, a less silver metallic if you like, but of course I'll be washing this so that'll tone it down quite a bit. So uh, pretty much Stormhose Silver really. And I'll paint that over all the armour areas. Now that's thoroughly dry, I want to wash all the armour areas with Nuln Oil. Just straight from the pot. And that will bring out all this lovely detail in his armour. Once that's dry, a bit of Stormhost Silver. I'm going to do a light dry brush, so I'll wipe most of that off. And lightly dry brush his armour, just the raised areas. Now using Bane Blade Brown, a few simple highlights to the brown leggings and also the haft of the axe. And then a few simple little highlights to his leggings. I didn't get too obsessive about this, just a few spots to make it pop. And while I was there, I painted in his belt as well. Of course, he could do all this detail really, really carefully, paint and highlight all those little folds. But again, these are gaming pieces and I don't want to spend too much time on them. I just want a good effect from a normal viewing distance on the tabletop. Then mixing a bit of white with Mephiston Red for a little pink highlight. I'm going to dab a few little highlights into the red material. Just to add a little bit of depth just on the edges and on the raised quilting. And there you have it. The Brute. Very easy to paint. Next up I'm going to paint the Courtesans. And I start with Cadian Flesh Tone as a flesh colour. And of course I'll use this flesh colour for the mercenaries as well. I'm going to paint the four courtesans and the four mercenaries. So paint in all the flesh areas. Don't forget the legs of course. Do the mercenaries too while you're at it. Doom Bull Brown is the colour that I'm using for the hair of the courtesan. It's a nice dark brown red kind of colour. As you can see, the paint is slightly watered down, so it just flows on nicely. Then for the skirt, XV88. And I'll paint the whole skirt area, but being careful just to leave the uh, white detail. So the lace bits at the edge of the skirt and the arm set bits. I'll just leave that white. Also, the underskirt is white as well. So I'll leave that. Retributor armor, gold. I'm using this for the fan. So I'll just quickly paint that in. And then I'm using white scar just to define that mask so it's nice and white. And a bit more XV88 for the thing on her forehead. Once that's absolutely dry, I wash the entire figure with seraphim sepia including the base, which I've already painted in Wraithbone. After that I do some highlights on the skirt and I've mixed Wraithbone with XV88 to give me the highlight colour. I also mix a bit of white with the flesh to highlight the flesh a bit. White scar to highlight all the white, including the bits of lace. And a little bit of Stormhost silver to highlight the edges of the gold fan. Here I am highlighting the dress, just the edges and the pleats of the dress. And you can do this as carefully and or as quickly as you like. I sort of went midway between the two, so painted in some pretty solid highlights and then made them a little bit lighter, blended them in just a tiny bit. Really you can spend as much or as little time on this as you want. Again, you'll be looking at it from a distance, so don't obsess about it too much. Again, a little bit of Wraithbone mixed with the uh, hair colour and a rough highlight on the hair. I use a very dark brown, Saigor brown. In fact, I mixed a little bit of black with it to make it even darker. And I used this for the leggings of the mercenary, or the pants. 
and I just went right down and did his boots in the same color as, as well. Since I'd already painted the base wraith bone, I was careful not to uh, mix those colors together. And Stegodon Scale Green is the color I've used for his shirt. It's kind of a bluey color, really. With a little bit of green in it. A little bit watered down so it flows nicely and I painted his whole shirt and his cap. And I used a bit of the dark colour I'd use for his leggings just to paint his hair as well. Also used that colour just to do a base colour on the daggers at his waist. Gore Grunter Fur, you can see I'm using a lot of contrast colours here to get things done quickly. Just use that for the haft of his axe and a bit of lead belcher for the head of the axe. Now I'm going to use Bane Blade Brown to paint in a few quick highlights on his pants and shoes. Just highlighting a few of those folds, giving it a bit of depth. Mixing a bit of white with my flesh colour and highlighting the flesh. And then rust grey and white scar, starting with rust grey, mixing a little bit of white scar, that gives me a highlight colour to highlight his shirt. And at first I was going to leave his whole shirt blue like this and just highlight it, but then it looked a little bit flat, so I decided to uh, highlight the straps a bit. I did that a bit later. At the moment I'm just highlighting the daggers and his belt with Bane Blade Brown. And at this point I went back to Wildwood and painted in the straps and then highlighted those with a bit of Bane Blade Brown. That made that shirt arrangement and the thing that he's wearing, the leather harness or whatever, made it a bit more interesting. A pretty quick paint job but effective in the end. So there they are, that's the batch I've done in my second painting video. We'll go on to more next time. As you can see, uh, they came out quite nicely and especially from a bit of a distance, these will look great on your tabletop. You don't have to spend ages on, on them. It's a board game after all. These are gaming pieces. So uh, with these techniques, you can do them pretty fast and still have them looking pretty good. That's the Esoteric Order of Gamers, orderofgamers.com. Go and check out the website. I've also released a rule summary and reference for Assassin's Creed Brotherhood of Venice, which you can download from the website. So go and check it out. You'll find it very handy for playing your games. Fantastic game. I'm really enjoying it. Hope you are too. I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.